is up, MMA fans? This is Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I am joined by someone who has been plying their craft in this MMA game for 13 years. He has traveled the world and competed for a plethora of promotion, over 38 fights. He recently began his third stint as a Bellator fighter and heads into the first round of the Bellator Featherweight Grand Prix on September 28th on the zone to face rising star AJ McKee. That man is called insane, although he has always been very nice to me. And he is Georgia Carhadian, Mr. Insane, sir. Thank you for giving me some time in the lead up to this important fight coming up next week. No, thank you, Jason. Thank you for having me, bro. Now, before we get into the fight coming up, I want to go back to your last fight, a short notice main event slot against Emmanuel Sanchez. Of course, yes. going into that fight, every fighter, you know, they're going to say the right things, even though it may be the situation not best for them. You had four Sanchez before, which is always important. You trained with guys like Archuleta, who I interviewed yesterday, uh, Saeed Awad, Cubs Wanton. You know, these guys train all year, so I'm sure you were in pretty damn good shape anyway. Was two weeks enough for you to get ready for that fight, or would a little bit more have time? bid preferred for you uh you know now that i'm looking back i think a little bit more time would be perfect because uh i i cut way too much weight for this uh, stuff I, how much did you end up cutting 16 pounds wow yeah so it, it was and then the the thing in when you fight in oklahoma they have no saunas there so the, juan i'm glad i had juan with me so we we made the we made the bathroom into a sauna which was <laughs> kind of like a steam room yeah it was weird, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, I, I mean, the first, I mean, first one, I feel good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the way to beat Sanchez. You know, you have to, he's so wiry, you got to take him down. But then, man, after the second run, I start feeling it. I start feeling the weight cut. Mm -hmm. But, you know, heads off to, to Sanchez. He already beat me twice and uh, he did good on the tournament. So, uh, you know, good luck to him. You came up short against Sanchez in an entertaining fight. I, I enjoyed the fight watching that fight. Sanchez is a guy that gets, you know, he gets seriously underrated all the time. Yeah. Right? And right. he's been elite, a featherweight in the company for a while. I mean, it, it was, you know, like you mentioned the second time, he didn't finish you, nor did he dominate you. Does it sting a little bit to, to lose to someone in general, but a second time like this? Or th do you see it like there is a bright side? Like what I just mentioned, he is one of the very best in the division. And it, it, it kind of is still a sign that you are one of the best still at the Bellator 145-pound division. Yeah, I mean, every time I look at the, because uh, I've been doing this for so long, 13 years, every mm -hmm. time I look at the loss, especially with Sanchez, uh, th there are certain things I got to work on, and he he's good at capitalizing on those things. And uh, uh, you could pretty much say he, he, he had my number, but, I mean, I'm looking for a third fight, so hopefully uh, <laughs> we run into each other in a tournament. But uh, like you said, man, I feel like leading up to this tournament, they really uh, maybe underrated him. Uh, they thought maybe Tylon Claxton is going to run through him, but mm -hmm. I was telling everybody that Sanchez is going to kill him, and I would, that's the only fight I was actually looking forward to. So, I mean, heads off to the guy, and uh, he did a good job. After, you know, you came up short, was there any fear that maybe they might not put you in the Grand Prix, or did you get assurances from the Bellator staff, like, you're going to be in the Grand Prix, you put on a good performance, we appreciate you doing what you did for us on short notice? Yeah, they came up to me. Uh, they came up, Kogan and uh, uh, Rich Chow, and they said, you know what? You t you uh, took this fight short notice, and uh, you just needed a little bit more to win this fight, And uh, but you were in the tournament for sure, so I, I knew I was going to be in the tournament. All right, that's awesome. Now, this is a huge opportunity for you, you know, because at 34, while you still are at a, a fight at a high level, I'm sure, you know, you you start to contemplate life after fighting once you hit a certain yeah. point. A million-dollar payday would go a very long way in setting you up for your future and your family. So, of course, the belt is hugely important. Everyone wants the belt. I know you want the belt. But for you at this particular point in your career, is the million dollars maybe even more important to you than the belt, or is it still the belt for you? I, I would say the belt. Uh, the belt makes you, you know, a champion, and once you become champion, you make good money. Mm. I, I feel like all the guys that are in the tournament, we uh, ex except Pitbull, we still haven't picked on, uh, you know, the money we make. We, we still like uh, it, it's 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 okay money. It's a good money. It's a money uh, where I could go to Whole Foods for all my camps, <laughs> but. but uh, <laughs> But, I mean, a million dollars is a million dollars, you know. And um, it plays a factor. I, I it, It's in my head. Like, of course, I'm going to be in a cage and I'm going to do everything. A million dollars in the line, so I'm going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But uh, <laughs> I'm just focused on one opponent, so I'm just focused on AJ. So 
that's my thing. Now I've asked, I've asked Pedro Carvalho this. I asked Juan Archuleta this yesterday. I asked Emmanuel Sanchez this. Now, the winner of Rory McDonald, Douglas Lehman, they're gonna get the million dollars from fifty. You know, after doing the eight man welterweight Grand Prix, you guys are also gonna get a million dollars at the end of this. Now that's awesome, but your Grand Prix is sixteen guys, so you guys kind of almost do double the work. Shouldn't you guys get two million dollars for this? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that until you said it. I know. Well, hopefully, uh, fifty comes with the full money on his in his pocket. But I know two two million, two million makes sense, and I think we bring a lot of action in the the welterweight. Now let's talk about AJ. You know, there is a lot of hype behind him, and understandably so. He's a, he's a talented fighter. Yet at fourteen and zero, his resume still leaves something to be a little desire. You know, his last win was against Pat Kern, who at one time, especially for me as a fan and, and and journalist, hell of a fighter. But that guy that was a hell of a fighter really hasn't been around in a few years. You know, he's a different fighter now. Honestly, his toughest test to date in terms of like durable veterans, you know, might have been John Teixeira of last year. You still have the fire in your belly and have fought much higher level of competition than Teixeira. In your mind, are you the first real serious test in AJ McKee's career? Uh, of course, you know. I mean, he hasn't fought me. I haven't fought him. Uh, uh, I like I've been saying this since a lot of interviews. I'm going to go out there and, and hurt him. I'm going to go out there and look for a knockout. Uh, he fought his fight with uh, Pat Curran, which... I, I don't know if Pat Curran changed after fighting me because uh, I landed a I landed a really serious kick on him and mm. he poked his uh, uh, liver. He was throwing out blood, but man, mm. I I was in a concussion too. He came with a nice left hook. I don't know if he's not been the same since then. But the fight against Pat Curran, I feel like Pat Curran beat himself just the same way Pat mm. Curran beat himself with Adam Boric. Yeah. I mean, Dan, Danny never landed, and he just fell back. He pretty much gave up. I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I think Pat is a great fighter, but at the end of the day, when you're in there for a million dollars, you got to willing to die. you got to do every, anything you can. But um, as far as AJ, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to knock him out. That's just the straightforward. I'm looking to hurt him. I'm looking to put my hands on him. I know he considers himself a Floyd Mayweather of MMA, but uh, it's, I, it's too soon to say. And in MMA, the O's always go away. It, mm -hmm. Even Khabib, it's going to be his time pretty soon. Yeah. So it's not like boxing, you know? Like, unless you build up somebody just like a boxer and just don't touch him, then I understand. But MMA is a totally different sport. And, and Bellator could hype him up. The media could hype him up all they want. But I, I know what I've done in my 13 years. And when I, when I see the promotion and how they hype him up, it, to me, it's just funny because... I mean, they're doing the same thing to Bubba, and, and I ruined that for Bellator. Mm. So I think, I think they're going to, you know, like I said, I'm just going out there to finish him. Now, going back to Pat Curran real bit, quick for a bit, you know, because you, you mentioned he, you know, something's a little different than him, maybe. He, he hurt himself, which something, it wasn't something he did in the past. He, he didn't shoot himself in the foot, and, so to speak, in fights. You know, and I even noticed it, again, like I'm a big fan of his in the, like the, pre-fight in like the arena during the show they kind of interviewed him in the, the locker room area and he didn't say like oh i'm excited i want to be champion again I, i'm dying to be champion he kind of mentioned the money was something that was really a motivating factor i'm glad when you i asked, asked you you said the title it's the title and when i asked emmanuel Sanchez, he also said the title do you think you know especially for you and pat Curran around the same age when you hit a certain age you know, you've been through a lot of fights like both you have. If you're, you're tight, if if your motivation is more the money and, say, the competition of being champion, does it change for something for you? It, it, is it maybe he's not as interested in champion and he's fighting, you know, to provide for his family and it's maybe on that competitive, you need that competitive fire of that motivation. Does Do you feel that's what it is for you still? You still strive competitively to be a champion? Yeah, I, I still like like you talk about this. I get goosebumps because I still have the <laughs> hunger in me to really uh, put a lot of highlight videos. You know, I, I don't uh, I don't feel like I'm like oh man, I I just break me uh, or beat me up or stuff like that. But I'm still hungry. I, I want the belt. I feel like the million dollars is good, but the belt is better. And uh, I'm still hungry, man. I mean. Uh, before Bellator, I went to Russia and I fought all those guys that were on steroids. So mm -hmm. that, that that just to prove myself that, okay, you could go back to the States and could still sign with someone and 
because when Bellator cut me, they told me, hey, you're not performing, you're not doing well, you're losing this, that. So I had to take that chance to go to Russia and fight there. So looking back right now, at where I'm at right now, I, I feel like with the, when I when you have this much experience, uh, I'm just calm, man. I'm just looking for for next next Saturday. Now going back to like technical aspects of this fight with AJ and stuff like that, and you mentioning you know you want to go for the knockout. He is a fairly large, kind of big uh, featherweight, long fighter, and he will have a six inch reach on you. How much has that reach and his style of kind of fighting long and stuff like that played into your preparation in terms of maybe training partners in this camp? And have you had in those thirty eight fights previously experience with having guys that had like a big reach like he will have on you? Yeah, yeah, I, I had uh, uh, Mike Miller. He has a very good reach. I had Rick Glenn. Rick Glenn had a good reach on me, and uh, but but like I mean, there, there's no secret that yeah yeah he has a long reach and I have a short reach. So if you're a fighting fan, you know the guy with the short reach has to create a fight. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna be the one that's coming in a zone. He might be just poking, running, poking, running, throwing kicks, running. But I'm I'm going out there to uh, take off your head. I'm going out there to get in that zone, the striking zone. Mm -hmm. AJ's bread and butter, though, we're talking about Lurich and his striking. His bread and butter has always been his grappling. He wants to go to his grappling a lot. So was his father. His father was heavy with the grappling. The same can be said for you. 14 career submissions. Everybody knows your grappling resume. From scouting him, you know, with the team, looking at him without giving too much away, of course, have you seen some weak spots on the ground that you feel you can exploit and take advantage of, uh, advantage of if the fight goes to the ground? Of course. You know, uh, back in the day when I was a purple belt, his dad used to come and train with us, and I used to beat him up. Bad. <laughs> Interesting. Like, I mean, I mean, he's. This is when he was MFC champion, and he used to come to uh, Melania back where I used to train before, and he used to grapple with us. And uh, he had nothing against me when I was a purple belt. Hmm. It, it, even when we fought at the Dream uh, card together, because he fought Shinya Yoki, uh, I get to spend good, good week with Antonio McKee, and I'm a type of fighter that I like to study. <laughs> I study. Because fighting is about figuring out your opponent in front of you. Right. And I've been doing it for 13 years. So from that day, I kind of realized how weak Antonio McKee's mind is. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, for Shinya Oki to TK on back when Shinya Oki was submitting everybody, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of things. But, uh, I mean, if, if AJ wants to go to ground with me, it's beautiful. We could do it. But, I mean, as far as also training partners, I uh, use Raymond Daniels. Uh, he, he gave me lots of good advice and, uh, you know, went over good game plan and all this stuff. So moving with Raymond is, is, is good for me, too. And I'm, I'm, I'm prepared, man. I'm ready. Now, I mentioned uh, your, your training partner and, and, and friend, Archuleta. Juan Archuleta's fighting Pipple, and, and I talked to him about it yesterday. I, you know, I asked him about your fight. He, he gave me some stuff, which you know, people will see in that interview. What are your thoughts on his fight? This is a big fight. He's going to fight Pipple, a guy, you know, that probably maybe the best fight in Belto history. It could be said. He's the best. Um, what are your thoughts on that fight? How do you like the matchup? How do you see that one playing out? I like that matchup a lot for Juan. Uh, man, he... Uh... He's a workaholic for sure. Uh, I used to think I was training hard, but when I'm next to him, I have to literally <laughs> to compete with him to stay. In that same thing. But it, it's it's a good thing, you know. Yeah. We need we need that. But I feel like he matches up really good with him, and uh, I think Juan's movement is going to be too much for people. And uh, later rounds, I think he's going to fill Juan's conditioning and. Uh, it's going to be bad night for people. I mean, in a perfect world for you guys, or it may be a bittersweet world, you could face each other in the finals. You know, yeah. I know you. he told me yesterday, you know, you guys are, when, if you both win, you're going to plan to avoid each other. You're going to pick a different venue, pick different opponents. But, you know, what, I asked him if, we, have you guys talked about that? Will you cross that bridge when it comes to it? He really didn't say too much in terms of, you know, talking depth. But is it something you've, you've thought about time to time? Like, when you look at him in the camp, like, I may fight him soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean uh, for example, today we're wrestling. TJ Dillashaw was running the class, yeah. and we're wrestling against each other. I mean, we're going to train until the end together. Mm -hmm. uh, even once we make it to the final, we're going to train together. But we make jokes. I mean, TJ makes jokes. Like, he's in the fucking tournament. You got to fuck him <laughs> up. And then he tells the same thing to him. So it's just we go back and forth, but it's, it's, it's a good uh, friendly push. We push each other. I mean, uh, 
we're looking forward to actually meeting each other, meeting each other in the finals. And, and Juan mentioned TJ, and I, I forgot to ask. I want to ask, but I ask you since you work with TJ too. He's a, he's there. Has he, you know, because he's with his issues and and his suspensions like that. Has he taken on like? Is he like straight up more like a coach for you guys? I'm sure he, he was in your corners. He was coaching away, but now that he needs to fill the void, has he like really taken on almost like a full on coach for you guys and, and everything in these last year or so? Uh, yeah, he uh, TJ has been uh, man. He he's been helping us a lot. He's been uh, coaching. He's been running a class, and um, and I and I feel like as a fighter, it's good for him too because those the, this two years will go by fast. Yeah. He will be in the gym with us. He will be. Uh, right now, he, he's not moving too much because of his shoulders. I mean, he shows the, the drills and stuff like that. But I think this is good for him. When he comes back, his, his mind is going to be sharp. Mm-hmm. He's going to be focused. And, uh, you know, anything TJ shows us, anything he uh, – any moves he gives us or anything we practice, it's, he's there always for us. And, I mean, the guy has been a champion and uh, – and it's 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 a good thing to have him in a corner. It's a good thing to have him in the gym to coach us. Do you ever look back on your career and think about how interesting and long it's lasted and it's been? You know, you fought Pitbull, who for me, you know, like I mentioned, one of the best fighters, maybe the best in Bellator history, back at Bellator 37, when few people really knew how good he was going to be. You fought Joe Warren, Bellator 18. <laughs> you fought Pat Curran. I mean, when I was looking at it, you fought Bao Quach. I haven't said Bao Quach like in 10 years. <laughs> you know, at, at the height of, of his skills, you fought Pat Curran. You fought, you fought freaking Dean Thomas, who, who when he was I still know, in the yeah. game, like, you know, yeah. fought in you know, a bunch of different promotions, World Series of Fighting, Dream, like you mentioned, you know, fighting Japan. You fought, like you also mentioned, fighting Russia and, and Moscow, stuff like that. You know, you dealt with the craziness of ACB, <laughs> you know, we talked yeah, about the yeah. last time of the drama, and you're still going strong. Is it, it has to have, you know, it has to have been quite a wild ride. Do you look back at any point and you stop and go, damn, like, that was just been crazy the last 13 years? I, I feel like I'll look back when I'm done fighting. Mm-hmm. I'll be looking back and be like, man, this this is this was a crazy ride. But, <clears throat> I mean, I, I eat clean throughout the whole year. I, I don't drink no alcohol. I don't do no partying. I mean, I have, I have kids. And I'm, I'm serious about this sport. And I'm just I'm just going to go until until I'll give you a hint. If, if I start looking like Pat Curran and mm-hmm. if I start giving up, then, I mean, there's no point to fight. I mean, you could right. tell... Some fighters, they say they want to fight, but when you watch them fight, you can tell they don't want to be in there. They want to get out of there. So yeah. if that comes ever, then I'll be out. But until then, man, I'm just, I just want to be the little Yoel, Loyal, Yoel Romero of 145. <laughs> <laughs> now, I always like to end the interviews asking uh, like some stuff, learning more about the fighter, you know, away from fighting. You guys, all you guys, you're so consumed with fighting. It's a, it's such a... a, a, a job that needs so much dedication so much time you know then you have to make time for your family stuff like that but when you can get that time away from fighting or you you've did all your responsibilities with the family you just have time yourself what are the things you like to do that has nothing to do with fighting i've you know people have told me a lot of different things the video games is a big one you know comic book collecting cooking uh you know <laughs> juan told me about he loving uh, uh food and, and, and ribeyes and potato salad and stuff like that <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> what are the things you love to do with that has nothing to do with fighting that even may make people go wait a minute insane he likes to do that that's insane <laughs> I probably uh, play FIFA. <laughs> I haven't okay. played FIFA in a long time, yeah. and, uh, and just spend time with my kids. I mean, mm. we we spend so many hours of training, we don't see them and stuff like that. But yeah. nothing better than good food and the family time. You mm. know that 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 just that that's that's it for me. And then with with us fighters we're like models man we want that food we have to go look at each other like look in the mirror oh man i gained five pounds Fuck, i'm gonna go run tomorrow so i just i probably just eat and spend time with the family is, are these is this week and then next week are, are they really the worst times for being a fighter because you you know you're trying to peak at, you know physically get that right final goal into the fight and then you you know you're so close to cutting the weight are are these the times where your wife and your kids just hate you because <laughs> you're just so no, miserable. No, 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 no. <laughs> maybe, my, 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 maybe my wife a little bit. No, I, 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 uh, there's a saying, two, I think two to three weeks, there's nothing you could do before a fight to help you. So mm. this next two, three weeks is just being smart, drilling. I mean, we st- I still do my conditioning, but uh, 
but just being smart with the weight cut and stuff like that and just doing all the stuff we have to do.